Kimberly from Keep the Tail Wagging, a blog about raw feeding, raising dogs naturally, and my life with dogs. And today I want to talk to you guys about what to do if your veterinarian is anti-raw. So for me, um, I'm lucky enough to have three veterinarians who are very supportive of how I feed my dogs. It's not that all of them are super on board with raw, but they're definitely not going to discourage me. And they've even given me tips and advice and recommendations, which I appreciate. But for folks who aren't as lucky to have people around them that support raw, you may have to basically argue your case. And all of the information I'm going to share is based on my personal experience. You know, I can't guarantee that it's going to work for everyone. There are veterinarians out there that are so passionately against raw that they refuse to even see a pet or have a pet enter their clinic that is raw fed. And, you know, that's their business, not mine. But, um, I have been able to change the minds of many vets, all except for one who was like, you know, she was an angry woman and she was basically very against raw feeding, um, passionately against raw feeding. So I left her alone, but everyone else, by the time we ended up finishing a conversation, as I explained everything that I'm going to explain to you guys here, they were like, you know what? I would be comfortable with you feeding raw if you were my client. Um, and which is awesome. So I hope that the information that I share with you here today is something that will benefit you in the future. So um, a few years ago, I um, wrote a blog post about why veterinarians are anti-raw. And I reached out to the veterinarian community and I got a lot of messages back. And it basically boiled down to seven um, concerns that people have about um, us feeding raw. And so I want to just go over each concern and explain to you how I explain to them um, that this is how I address these issues. So one thing I found is that when a veterinarian, you know, you tell them, you know, what do you feed your dog? I feed a raw food diet. And then, you know, there's that pause and it's like, well, you have to be really careful about that. And some of them will be nice to you about it. Some of them won't be. But what I have found is that instead of getting defensive or angry or storming out, I have just turned it around and said, so what are your concerns? And as they share their concerns, I just address each one. So the concerns that I received, and I have notes, are that of the bacteria, the bones, you know, meeting our dog's nutritional needs, continuing to educate ourselves. They're worried that we won't do that. Um, adding grains to the diet. Actually, only one person said that. Um, skipping vet visits or just not trusting the vet, you know, raw feeders have a reputation of not trusting vets and then not feeding enough variety. So these are in no particular order, but we'll go down from one to seven. So one, bacteria um, is an issue. So I always tell people that if you or someone in your home has a severely compromised immune system and you're seriously not comfortable feeding raw, then don't. You're lucky because we live in a time where there's so much variety in what we can feed to our dogs that we don't have to feed raw if we don't want to. You know, when I first started, it was basically raw feeding or kibble and canned. Um, there were, you know, you could cook or things like that, but I didn't know how to cook a meal for my dogs. Um, so I just switched to raw. But today, not only can you buy cooked food, there's Farmer's Dog, there's Ollie Pets, there's Nom Nom Now. There are so many cooked food brands out there for our dogs that actually have been around for a, quite some time that you don't have to feed raw. But if you are going to feed raw and bacteria is a concern, dogs have properties in their saliva that kill bacteria and a raw fed dog's gut is acidic. So it's not a hospitable place for bacteria to set up camp and thrive. So there is of course good bacteria in the gut, but I'm talking about you know the E. coli, the salmonella, the listeria, the bacteria that is mentioned in recalls. Um, also a dog's gut is shorter. So they digest food and absorb nutrients a lot more quickly and dispose of waste really quickly. So it's just, in my experience and based on what I understand, not an issue. It's a non-issue. However, like I said, if you're concerned, you don't have to feed raw. But if you haven't started feeding raw yet and you're still like, well, if you have cooked a, cook a turkey dinner or a chicken dinner, if you've had a barbecue and you've handled raw meat, then you can feed your dog a raw food diet. You know, I wash my hands. I clean the kitchen. I clean all the equipment that I use. I am a clean person, as most of us are. So I'm not mixing up raw meals and then picking my teeth with um, dirty, raw covered fingers. You know, we are being careful, we are being thoughtful. So it's just not a concern in my experience. And I've been feeding raw for nine years. I just, I have never gotten sick. And 
my partner in my home, he has never gotten sick either. Um, bones. Bones are a serious issue um, only because dogs can get hurt. I mean, you hear about people, I, I saw someone, every time he cooked a steak, he gave his dog the bone. And when he told me this, it made me cringe because it's a cooked bone. We're not supposed to feed cooked bones. Well, in raw feeding, we're talking about raw bones. And if you've ever been bitten by a dog, I have, I was bitten on my thumb accidentally. You could still see the scar right there. That was Apollo. I'm saying all that to say that a dog's jaw strength is astronomical. So they have no problem ch chopping through bones. The trick for me was to find the bones that were a good fit for each of my dogs and making sure that they ate them thoroughly, that they weren't trying to swallow them whole or they weren't chewing them in a way that was breaking off sharp pieces and then they're swallowing those. Cause I was wor worried about them perforating their esophagus or somewhere in their gut. Um, so I have a list of bones that are a good fit for my dogs. I'm not gonna sit there and rattle them off. It's, you know, every dog is unique. It's just a matter of trying out bones, sitting there watching your dog, always keeping a high value treat on hand. So if the bone isn't a good fit, you can trade. Um, and just knowing, knowing your dog, don't jump into the deep end of the ocean when it comes to bones, you know, actually start small and move your way up. And by small, I mean, small for your dog. So like for my dog, when Apollo joined our family in 2019, I started him with a duck neck and I held on to one end while he chewed the other end. And when he chewed it through, I gave him the second duck neck to see if he can handle it or if he was going to inhale it. Nope. He laid there and he chewed it just like the first one. He was perfect. And he has been perfect with bones. So I always monitor them. And um, I don't push them. If I'm not sure about a bone and I'm not comfortable, then I just don't feed it. There's a lot of options out there. There's I also want to add that a lot of people have the misconception that when their dogs eat bones, that they'll dissolve completely and go away, you know, as they're being digested. No, you will see pieces of bone in the stool. That's perfectly normal. So don't be shocked when you if see you it. If you were still worried about feeding raw bones, which I was for the first two years that I was a raw feeder, you can grind the bones a lot, you know, the commercial raw that we get um, online or at the pet store that is, has ground bone in it. Or you can, you know, if you want your dogs to get the, um, satisfy their chew drive, get the, the jaw muscle workout that bones can give them, you can try chews. So I am a huge fan and a long-term customer of Real Dog Box. And they offer air dry chews. And so I give my dogs raw bones, like the big recreational bones outside in the summer on nice days when they're not going to make a mess. And they just lay in the grass and chew on the bones. But all the rest of the year, I live in the Pacific Northwest. We don't have this year. We haven't had very many nice days. Um, so I am giving my dogs chews from real dog box. So they still get the teeth cleaning, the jaw workout, the satisfaction of their chew drive. but with um air dried shoes and i've had great success you know getting shoes from that company and i trust them and appreciate them so much so that's the story about bones you know yeah there is always going to be a risk but how big that risk is really depends on the dog and the bone um balance a lot of veterinarians are concerned that we are not meeting our nutritional needs or our dog's nutritional needs. In 2013, a study came out that said 95% of homemade diets weren't meeting at least, or were lacking in at least one vital nutrient for adult dogs. And if you read the full study, it's a bit, um, there's questions. There's a lot of questions about the study. Huh. If you go back and actually read the entire study, you will see that it says a lot more. It raises a lot more questions than just taking a sound bite. For instance, um, it lists all of these books and websites that it took um, recipes from. But if in the case of books, it doesn't tell you which recipes it chose, and it doesn't tell you how they made their determination on which recipes they chose. So it could be said that they had already, and they admit this, they thought that most of the recipes they found would be lacking in nutrients, and they proved that. So they could have just chosen recipes that they knew would be lacking in nutrients. You also don't know if they took treat, did they include treat recipes in this study? Because a treat recipe isn't something that's meant to be fed to a dog on a daily basis. In fact, if it's a recipe book, we're not expect, no one expects a pet parent to open up an entire book of recipes for their dog and only choose one recipe to feed their dogs for the rest of their lives. They're going to alternate between recipes. 
So I have lots of questions, but to be honest, despite all the questions I have, I wouldn't be surprised if a legit study came out that again showed that 95% of homemade diets were lacking in a vital nutrient. So um, you can cover that vital nutrient like by adding a raw egg possibly, depending upon what that nutrient is, but that's another story. When it comes to balancing my dog's diet, I do three things. One, I use a base mix. I start with 80, 10, 10, and then I mix in a base mix. And the first time I started doing this was several years ago. I did it for six months, had my dog's nutrient tested. The test, wrote, the test results came back showing that they were slightly low in vitamin B. So I made an adjustment, basically adding more heart meat to their diet, and then they were good to go. Um, a year or so later, I tested them again. They were good to go. So you can feed a raw food diet, use a base mix, have them tested. And that way, you know that you're meeting your dog's nutritional needs. Another thing that I do is I feed a variety of proteins. So I don't feed just one meal for the rest of their lives. I feed every week. I change up the main protein in their diet. This week it's quail. Last week, I think it was, oh, it was beef in, um, and duck the week before it was pork. So I alternate that over, you know, the months and weeks and whatsoever, thinking that over time, you know, over a week, over two weeks, my adult dogs will have, a, have consumed a balanced diet. I will have met all of their nutritional needs. I do not do this, however, for puppies. For puppies, it's important to meet their nutritional needs on a daily basis. So I always recommend either feeding a puppy, a commercial raw diet, having a diet formulate it for that puppy so you know that they're getting everything that they need it or um, investing in the software and formulating your own diet, which brings me to the third way I make sure that I'm meeting my dog's nutritional needs. I have the software animal diet formulator, which is so much fun. And I usually run recipes through it just to see what I can do to improve my dog's diet and as a way to educate myself and learn more about what's in their diet. And I have found it very useful. They have a two week free trial. So, you know, you can pop on over to their website, sign up and try it out for yourself. I'll put a link below. So um, number four is the fact that veterinarians are concerned that we won't continue educating ourselves. Um, I have always thought of raw feeding as a marathon, not a sprint. It's not something that one day you wake up and you know everything about raw feeding. It would be nice, but it's not true. And it's best to understand that that way you won't be caught off guard when a new bucket load of information hits the, the social medias and we're all freaking out because, oh my God, we weren't doing it right. So when I first started feeding raw nine years ago, 80-10-10 was considered a balanced diet. Today, it is absolutely not considered a balanced diet. Uh, I'm sure there are probably some people out there that still are like, no, it's fine. Um, when I first started feeding raw, there are people who only fed their dogs green tripe. Today, people would be shocked to find out if someone only fed their dogs green tripe. Uh, there's a lot of changes. We're always learning. And since there isn't an organized you know, way for all of us to learn the same thing about raw feeding. We're learning from each other. We're learning by reading books. We're learning by watching videos like this one. We're doing the best that we can. So as long as we're willing to be open-minded and hear new information, that is the best way possible. And I always invite my veterinarians to weigh in. If you see that I can do something better, then I'm all ears. All This is all about my dogs and I love my dogs. So I am perfectly happy to admit that I do not know everything and I can stand to learn a whole lot. So bring it to, oh, number five is grains. So I was interviewed today um, and the person also interviewed a veterinarian and her concern, the veterinarians was that raw diets doesn't contain grains, which can lead to heart disease. And my question to that is, where's your support? because I don't think that that's the case. I do recall that when um, everyone was discussing DCM several years back, uh, the question was, you know, these dogs that are on a grape free diet seem to be getting um, heart disease at a higher rate. And it was believed that it was because the pet food manufacturers in an effort to satisfy people who want it grain free because the grains were causing allergies in dogs, um, they wanted something different. So they swapped out the grains for legumes and the legumes acted as a nutrient blocker and um, prevented the absorption of taurine, which is beneficial to the heart. And that is why dogs were developing heart disease. 
I think it was determined later that there just really isn't a clear understanding of what was happening because some, some of it is genetic, some of it's diet, some of it is um, just bad luck. So there really isn't a clear answer. What I do know and I'm confident in saying is that raw feeders do not need to add grains to their dog's diet because that is not the reason that dogs were getting DCM. Um, it was, I believe that it was the legumes acting as a nutrient blocker. Plenty of scientists came forward and said that. One was um, Dr. Guthrie in an interview with Dr. Karen Becker and Rodney Habib in their Insight Scoop group. So, you know, I, I tend to, that makes sense to me. I could be wrong. And if I am, feel free to say so in the comments and explain to me why and share your support because I do want to learn more. But I don't think that raw fed dogs have to worry about um, developing heart disease unless they already have a predisposition to heart disease. I don't think the diet is going to cause it um, if it's a nutritionally complete diet. Uh, skipping vet visits and not trusting the vet. So yeah, raw feeders have a reputation of not trusting the vet. And I think it's possibly because, you know, on social media, you know, sometimes we, we show the worst side of ourselves on social media. It's like we're behind a screen and we just start throwing out stuff. A couple of years ago, a group of veterinarians were raging against raw feeders and, and someone said that they were being harassed by them. And it was like really horrible. That was when I saw a post, you know, several posts by veterinarians that, you know, I will not let raw fed dogs into my clinic. I mean, it was crazy. Unfortunately, the negative is what really catches steam and spreads like wildfire on social media. So for a lot of people, they see that over and over again, and they start looking at their vet with the side eye and um, there's problems. And I have learned to just try and have as open of a relationship and dialogue with my veterinarian as possible. I want everyone to be on the same page because again, it's about my dog and I need them to help me keep my dog alive. And so um I try to trust them and I try to be open so they can trust me as well. I don't skip vet visits. I don't go to the vet as often as they would like me to. Over the past couple of years, we had the pandemic. So, you know, we were staying home and I did not feel comfortable sending my dog into the vet by themselves. Um, I still have, I have to do that for Scout, but I would prefer not to. And so I'm waiting for them to open up the clinics before I start going for regular checkups again. But my dogs are definitely a year past due on blood work. And so we need to get that taken care of. But that's not because I don't trust my vet. It's because of the world that we're living in right now. Um, I think it's important for us to just try and for them to, you know, we both have to come to the middle and figure it out. If you are concerned and if you have a vet that you can't trust, I mean, maybe in this discussion, talk to them about why. And if they're still not open to it, and trust me, I know that there are ones out there. My very first veterinarian was one that I, there's no way in hell I could have had this conversation with him and have it go okay. So, you know, you know what, my heart breaks for you. I don't have any advice if you just have someone that is really willing not to talk to you. The final one is, Feeding variety. People are worried that we're not going to feed enough variety. And I think that when, well, I should say when I would hear this about how we needed to be feed variety, I was trying to feed everything under the sun and it was too expensive. So now I try to limit the main protein in my dog's diet to three proteins, and then I'll go as high as five. So my dogs on a regular basis get quail, duck, pork, beef, and when I can get it, rabbit. So those are the main five proteins. There are a lot of other proteins out there that I can add, you know, I feed them fish sometimes and they get sardines on a regular basis, but you know, raw eggs are a protein. They get those on a regular basis, but I consider those more of a whole food supplement than an actual main protein. No one's, I'm not feeding my dogs eggs as a main protein, but um, you know, I try to stick to that variety. So if you are, new to feeding raw, if you're trying to get diets together and you want to work with a meal formulator, consider, you know, finding one, the person I recommend is Scott J. Marshall of Raw Feeding 101. Tell him the three proteins that you can um, 
source in your area affordably, and he will build a recipe around that with other ingredients that you can source. Um, if you can only afford one meal formulation, then just do one. If you can afford three, then do all three. Um, he has specials all the time. And so just follow him on Facebook. He has a really amazing raw feeding group. In fact, the only one that I belong to. And you can keep track of specials. You can also follow him on Instagram. He publishes them there as well. So those are the main reasons why do or dogs, why veterinarians are concerned about us feeding our dogs a raw food diet. Um, I hope that I've given you some ideas of the conversation that you can have with your veterinarian, the things that you can explain to them. If Again, if your veterinarian is still giving you pushback, it may be a situation where you guys will have to agree to disagree, but they'll still treat your dog. Um, I know that there are people out there that unfortunately they have one veterinarian for them to switch to another veterinarian requires hours of driving. Um, gas prices are insane. So that's not good. <laughs> um, and in those cases, again, I'm sorry. And hopefully your veterinarian by seeing your healthy dog will eventually change their mind. As I said at the beginning, I've changed a lot of vets mind. One of them, I changed his mind just by him just seeing my dogs for a few years. He was willing, he wasn't willing to recommend raw feeding, but he definitely wasn't going to condemn it anymore because he saw what it did for dogs. So um, just keep hope alive and we will um, change the minds of veterinarians one person at a time. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to add them below. If you've had a, a situation where you've been able to change a veterinarian's mind, please let me know. I wanna hear what you said and what their concern was. And if you yourself are a veterinarian and you have concerns, I would love to know what they are because anything that I can do to um, basically help make it clear what we're doing and how we're doing it, I am happy to do it. If I can bring y'all into my house and show you how I do raw feeding, I would, but I'm not gonna because some of y'all be crazy. So thank you so much. Take a moment and click like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye guys.